everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to look at how we can make this Frogger style game in Scratch. This is a really fun game, got quite a lot of code here. So we have kind of the hero of the game, trying to get past, so here is a mouse in a witch's house, trying to get past these cats. I'll just show you what happens. If you get caught, it makes the boink sound. We get a minus one score and we go back to the start. And then if we manage to get past get to the finish line we're going to get five points and move on to the next level so we can have multiple levels with multiple different characters involved in this so it can really go on for ages so let's have a look at how we do this so to start off with we need to choose our background and our sprites so you can choose whatever you like this one instead i'm going to go underwater I'm going to choose my main character. Let's have a jellyfish. Cool, we could pop that here. And then I want the jellyfish to be avoiding some sharks. So let's find our sharks. Let's have a little search. Here we go. <clears throat> go for this shark here. So. These are currently a bit too big, so I'm just going to change the size down to, let's try 70. I'm going to go for 60 instead over here. And let's do the same for the shark. So you can just change the size of our sprites right here. Perfect. So we've got the background. We're going to have more than one shark, but we're going to do all the code on one first and then just duplicate it because it's much easier and will save us time. So we just need to make a finish line. So I'm going to go here to my paint on scrap on my sprite and just draw a line. That's not very straight. There we go. Pop that in the middle here. And then on my screen, I can just pop it over here on the right hand side. So that will be my finish line for the jellyfish to get to, to move on to the next level. Cool, so we nearly have all of our elements. Okay, we're just going to add a variable, which is going to be our score. So over here in variables, I'm going to make a new variable called score, and this will be for all sprites. Fab, now we've got everything ready, we can get started with some code. So now I'm coding on my kind of main character, which is my jellyfish. And over here, I'm going to start off with making it move up and down and left and right. So I'm going to grab when space key pressed four times. And I'm going to change this to up arrow. And then when the up arrow is pressed, I want it to move up and down on the Y axis. So over here in motion, I'm going to go to here change y by 10 which means we'll go up by 10 steps cool and then i'm going to change y by minus 10 for my down arrow and then to go left and right so we want to be changing x by 10 to go right and we want to be changing x by minus 10 to go left. Cool, so now we can move up, down, left, and right. Perfect. Now we need to go on to our shark or whatever kind of enemy you've chosen for the game. So we want to start it off at the position we want to start it off at. So I'm going to go over here and get when green flag clicked. And then before I get my forever statement, I want to just get go to this position on X and Y. So just make sure these numbers here are the same as they are here, which it should be if you drag it over first and then you select the block second. Okay, otherwise you can just change the numbers here yourself. Cool. So we're gonna grab a forever statement and then we want our shot to be moving constantly. So we're gonna get move 10 steps. Now you can change this to change the speed. So you might want to have your earlier levels being fast, sorry, slower, and your later levels being faster. 
Um, so we'll see how fast it is when we start it. And then we just want to make sure if it's on the edge, it bounces. So it's continuously going up and down. So now we can see it's going left and right, which isn't the way we want it to go. So let's just grab here, point and direction. <clears throat> We want it to go 180 degrees. So now, yep, we're going up and down. Perfect. Now let's duplicate our sharp. You'll see if we don't change the position, it's just gonna go together at the same speed. We want them to be moving at different speeds. So let's go see where it's starting. We're gonna drag number two. I'm gonna start him over here. Okay, so then on the code, I'm just going to change my numbers here to make them match the ones on the screen. So I'm going to change X to 103 and Y to minus 48. So now we're starting in different places, which just makes it a bit more fun and interesting. So I can try and go past. But as you can see now, nothing happens if I hit them. So it's not much of a game. So let's add some more code in. So we're going to go back to our jellyfish. And we'll start a new block of code. So when green flag clicked, forever. Then from sensing, sorry, we need if and then. And then from sensing, we want touching. And from the drop down list, we'll just select shark two. So when the green flag is clicked forever, if it's touching shark two, then I want to add a sound. So I'm going to go over here to my sound tab. Okay, we can hit see we've already got some sounds already here. Okay, that's not quite appropriate for what we want. So I'm going to choose the bonk sound. Of course, you can choose whatever sound you want. I just want to make it play that sound. So if it touches the shark, we're going to play the bonk sound until done. <clears throat> Cool, we also want the jellyfish to go back to the start. So we want it to go to, and then making these numbers the same as the ones here. So that will be X minus 184 and Y minus 29. So we'll go back to the start. And we also want it to change our score. So over here, we want to change from the drop down list, we select score by minus one. Okay, we also want to make sure that when we start the game, we set the score to zero. So we'll just pop this here. So when the green flag is clicked, set score to zero. So let's see how this works so far. Cool, so we've made the sound, we've gone back to the start and it's minus one. So we can now just duplicate this block of code here, pop it here, and we just change this one <clears throat> to shark. Three. Cool, so it should now work for both of them. Um, cool. Ah, but then when we start again, we go back to zero. Now we want to see what happens when we get to the finish line. So again, we're going to grab, in fact, we could just duplicate this again and change some bits. So if we hit sprite one, which is our finish line. We don't want to play the bonk sound. We do want to go back to the start and we do want to change our score. So let's give ourselves five points if we make it to the end. And then we're going to broadcast a message. And then this will allow us to change the background and change the sprites and do all kinds of things very, very easily. So let's broadcast a new message and let's call that level Two. Oh, so my sharks might be going too fast. Let's see if we can get fast. I'm just going to slow them down a little bit. So we can actually get past the first level. Obviously, not very good at this. Okay, let's just pop it over here. Okay, so it changes the score, it takes it back to the start and it broadcasts this message. Perfect. So, if 
Back in our backdrops, we want to find a new backdrop for level two. So let's find another underwater one. Cool, let's change it to this one. Fab. So we want to add here on our backdrop code that when we press the green flag, we make sure we switch to underwater one, which is our first backdrop. And then when we receive the message level two, we switch to backdrop underwater two. Perfect. Okay, now back on our sharks, we can add here, when green flag clicked, we want to make sure that these always show for our first round. However, when we hear the broadcast message level two, we want these to actually disappear. And we're gonna have some more characters come in. So then when I receive level two, we want it to hide. Same thing for both of our sharks. Perfect, let's see. Uh, really not very good at this. Cool, so now they've hidden and we've changed the backdrop and we've got our score, which is excellent. So I'm gonna choose my next sprite. What should we go for? Let's go for some crabs, why not? Great, bring it a bit smaller. Again, we're gonna have three this time and they're going to be moving faster. Okay, but we're going to do the code on one first and then move on to the next one. So we wanna make sure that they only show up for level two. So when the green flag is clicked, we want them to hide. And then when we hear the message level two, we actually want them to show. Cool, and then we're gonna just put in the same code that we have here. So we want them to be moving, pointing in the right direction and, and bouncing on the edge. So we'll have it here. Go to this position. Point in the direction. 180 and then forever <clears throat> move let's have the one eight steps and if on edge bounce so let's check that this works that's obviously me cheating Oh, they're moving not quite in the right way, I think, because of the shape of them. Let's see if we can choose a different sprite. Let's have some ghosts, some undersea ghosts. So let's get rid of this sprite. I'll just do that again quickly. See, so when this green flag clicked, let's hide. When I receive level two, we are going to show, we are going to go to X2, Y 124, and then forever, we are going to move eight steps and then if it's on the edge, we will bounce. Of course, this should work. I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. Let's see. We need to add point in direction. 180, and then we know that will work. Fab, so now I'm just going to duplicate my ghost. and then move around as they go up and down. So we just want to change the position of this one, so that's good. So let's do 26 and eight. And then let's duplicate again. So we have three of them. We'll start this one down here. 
So we can go. So now we've got three sprites in this level. They're going to be kind of getting in our way. We've still got the same code for if we get to the finish line. So now you can keep doing this for more and more backdrops and more and more sprites. We just need to make sure that the jellyfish, if it hits these sprites, has the same reaction. But luckily, we already have the code kind of laid out. All we need to do is duplicate this block. So the same one that we use for the shark, which is going to pop under here. But instead of the shark, we're going to make it for the ghost. Duplicate that again. Duplicate that again. So then it will say ghost two and ghost three. So again, you can just keep doing this, broadcasting more levels, having more sprites, adding loads more in, getting them faster and having different backdrops. So there we go, that is all of our code. And now you can start playing. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Come back for more videos. I'll be putting more videos up every week. And happy playing, happy coding.